Hey everybody, uh, we've got a day in Biloxi, Mississippi, so we're going to spend it, or at least part of it, at a place called Beauvoir, which is the last home of Jefferson Davis. He was a U.S. Senator and Congressman and President of the Confederacy. This place was built in 1852, and uh, it's now got a library on it and a gift shop and uh, obviously the home that he lived in. So we're going to check it out and bring you along for the ride. Winnie's piano, and that was Winnie. And you could see that the uh, ivory has come off most of the keys. I want to touch it very badly because it says not to. <laughs> about this flag. Something about our flag that I just adore. It's very thin and worn. There's something special about this flag. flag is over a hundred years old and he purchased it. And there's a picture of it in front of the house and here's the original photograph. This is the kind of stuff I love. Check this out. This is the old bones of that carriage. Looks like a carriage that carted around an old person. I don't know who that is. But I just am amazed at the creativity of humanity. This is Winnie's boat. I wonder how often she actually used it. It's in awfully good condition. There's David. Whenever we go to a museum, I can usually find him sitting on a bench waiting for me somewhere. Thank you for being so patient while yeah. I look at every single thing. You're welcome. We have to get over to the house soon for our tour. Okay. Here's the back side of the museum. It's a beautiful building, simple and yet elegant. And beautiful gardens in the back. It's just beautiful. Look at these trees. Aren't they just amazing? You can't possibly feel into the majesty of these trees right now through the video I'm suspecting, but. <gasps> Oh my gosh, they're so old. I've been here so long. We've sat in silence and watched everything unfold so gracefully. Our tour is about to start. Where is the house? Oh, there it is. We're going to go in soon. I don't know if they'll let us videotape in there, but we'll see. That brings us to my favorite item in the house, this grandfather clock. Now, this clock was built by John Turnbull in Georgetown, which is Washington, D.C., in 1783. It's an eight-day clock, so after I wind it, it's going to tell us the seconds and the date. But look at the Roman numeral number four. The clockmakers back in the day did four slash marks rather than a slash and a beat because artistically, it's more symmetrical and balanced with the number eight. So whenever you see four slash marks, you know you're looking at an antique or a replica. And I just ruined the antiques roadshow for y'all. <laughs> Every time they have a clock, I have to run in and check out number four. Now the portrait, that is Jefferson Davis. He receives it on his 81st birthday. He's holding in his hands his memoirs, The Rise and Fall of the Confederate Government. It's a two-volume book that takes him three years to write, and he wrote it all down here in our little cottage. He passes away that December of 1889 at the age of 81. These two cupboards were placed here by Miss Verena. This is natural cypress. It's never been painted or treated. 
It's kind of neat to see that natural wood next to the faux oak cypress. I love the natural wood. That one held her china, this one held her canned goods like her pickles and her jellies. Now this is the original horsehair plaster from 1848. When we do the plaster work, what they do is they grind this up and they reconstitute it and then they put it back up on the ceilings. Now, Jefferson Davis, when they capture him, they chain him to his prison cell bed. He has two armed guards that stand over him 24-7. It takes a group of men, they're called the Secret Six, that raise the bail money to get Jefferson Davis out of jail. That $100,000 is equivalent to a million dollars today. The Secret Six, they're all northern men. One of them is the abolitionist Horace Greeley, another one of Vanderbilt, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Now, Jefferson Davis is the only Confederate to ever lose his citizenship. It takes until 1978 under Jimmy Carter until he's reestablished as a U.S. citizen. Those trees right in front of us. Neat. We learned that uh, Beauvoir, Beauvoir? Beauvoir. Beauvoir means beautiful view. Miss Dorsey yeah, named it. There's beautiful history to this house. The man who built it was um, very egocentric, but because of that, he built such a beautiful home. And then she bought it from him, and she was an author, Miss Dorsey, beautiful woman, who was very loving and kind, and then basically gave it to Davis and his family, because he couldn't afford to buy it. It's pretty cool. Interesting history. going to tell us something cool? Oh, yeah. I'm one of the directors here and I'd like to welcome you to Beauvoir. I'd like to welcome you to our historic cemetery. Uh, we had over 3,000 soldiers, veterans in Mississippi come through here of the war between the states. We got about 600 of them buried out here. So about one-fifth of all the ones that came through. Got some pretty prominent people in our cemetery. We got another 150 or so ladies who were their wives and widows. Uh, 1903, it was opened as a veteran's home. It lasted until 1956, 53 years. For the 40s, the largest budget item in the Mississippi state budget was veterans' benefits. Mm -hmm. So this was the official state veteran's home. Got several different types of stones in there. The, the little tiny ones that kind of have a block around the lettering, they're from way back government stones, like turn of the century or so. The ones that are a little taller, like this one right here in the front with the point, are the modern Confederate stones. Our U.S. government is still recognizing Confederate veterans as veterans of America, and they provide stones for them. So one little piece of sanity amidst the craziness going on. The reason why the Confederate gravestones are pointed, whereas the Union are rounded, is so that a Yankee wouldn't sit on a Confederate gravestone. Some of the famous people in the cemetery, uh, about midway through in a little walk, grassy walkway uh, in this direction, is Jefferson Davis's father, Samuel Davis. He died when Jefferson was just a little boy. And basically, Jefferson's oldest brother, Joseph, 20 years older than him, acted as a surrogate father. They had 12 children. Jefferson Davis was the last. His mother named him middle name Finnis. F-I-N-I-S, which meant she was done. So he was Jefferson Finnis Davis, meaning the last of the family. We have veterans from almost all the major battles. It would have been amazing to sit down and talk to them. They would have fought at Gettysburg, Vicksburg, Shiloh, all over the place. And uh, in the 1970s, we had a college volunteer here from Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg. And he was a metal detective. And he was up around the Vicksburg campaign, and he was it was fall, and he hadn't really found much. He was about ready to quit for the day. 
and he got a hit. So he pulled out his pocket knife and started digging in the soil and he determined that there was some lead in the ground. When lead rusts, it rusts bright white, almost like granite or marble. So he kept digging, ah, got a bullet, ah, got a couple bullets, ah, got the whole cartridge pouch from a soldier's belt. Dug a little more, whoop, I got the whole soldier. We can determine he was a Confederate soldier, but not the state or his unit or his name. So the young man came to the board at Beauvoir in the late 70s and he said, you know, there is no such thing as a Confederate uh, uh, unknown soldier. Why don't we create one? So that young man, whoever he was, is now our Confederate unknown soldier. Been here since 1980, so 40 years. So we have various big ceremonies. Uh, we are certified by the same people that certify Arlington as the United States as unknown soldiers. Places in Europe from World War I and World War II that have unknown soldiers. And there are certain organizations that certify you and maintain that, that, that uh, proclamation. The, you know, the International Order of the Odd Fellows, it's like a Lions Club or a Masons group comes here every February and has a pilgrimage. We had about 2,000 people here in February. They laid about 145 wreaths to our young men. So we're quite quite proud to be the possessors of the last unknown soldier, only unknown soldier, the Confederacy. This map identifies the graves and it should have a loose leaf book there that would tell you more details. Hurricane Christabel there a couple weeks ago destroyed our book. We're gonna have to replace it. But they are available in the library. You look, look, look up names and the details. We have a wonderful book that was written by uh, the wife of a history professor. Miss Jane Sullivan spent 10 years documenting everybody in our cemetery. If there were pictures, if there were legends, how they came to be here, how long they were here. And basically, that book is for sale in our gift shops. Oh.